I'm Patty with Comax Business Systems. Today I will be giving you a basic overview of how to print from your PC to the copier using the print driver. The print driver is what sends commands such as duplexing, stapling, and other helpful options to your copier. Just keep in mind anything that you can do at the copier level can be done when you send a job from your PC to the copier. So let's take a look at your options. Once you pull up your document, you will do a file print and select your BizHub print driver. And as you can see, we've already already have our driver selected here. Your options uh, will be found under your properties or preferences. So let's go ahead and click in there. Now you'll notice when I scroll across the top headers or tabs, you'll see underneath that tells you exactly what's available to use under each one of these tabs. So let's start with the basic tab first. Now over to the right um, you have an option for original orientation, portrait or landscape. By default um, you have portrait selected. Now if you need to run a landscape document all you do is click landscape and you, you can see how the preview changes here. Now your original size, the default is always 8.5 by 11 and the paper size is always defaulted to same as original size. Now here's a good example if I maybe wanted to take um, an 8.5 by 11 document and put it on poster size paper I could come in and go to the paper size and I can select 11 by 17 and you'll notice how the zoom automatically goes up to 131 percent so it automatically scales to a different size paper. So we're just going to go back and put this uh, paper size default to same as original. Okay, your paper tray is on auto and that's just like it is on the copier so if you would like to pull paper from a, a selected tray you can do your drop down and you can see where your trays are numbered here. Now if you're running thick paper um, this is something very important and I've talked about this in our earlier videos but if you want to run thick paper from the bypass you're going to select bypass and over to the right there's a little tab that says paper settings for each tray so if my document um, I need to run my document on a thick two what I'm going to do is come over to the paper type and I'm going to select thick two so just keep in mind whatever you have your PC or your copier set to the thickness it has to match on your print driver okay so we're going to just change this back to plain paper Okay, now output method, you're defaulted to print. If you do a little drop down here, there's several uh, things available that are really handy. The first one is a secure print, and I do have a section, a little video uh, that I did on secure print. And basically, what a secure print does is allow you to give a, a document a code at your PC, and it will not print at the copier until you go and put that code in. So if you're interested in doing that, just uh, go to the secure print video. This is also where you would select to save in a user box if you have user boxes set up. But by default, you know, you're going to be on print. Copies, if you need more than one, you know, this is where you're going to go for your copies. Okay. Collate is basically means sorting. So if I have a two page document and I want three sets, if I leave it on the default of collate, I'm going to get page one, two, one, two, one, two. You'll notice how if I take it off, you're going to get all of page one together and all of page two together. Okay. Offset uh, basically means that it staggers sets. So if you have that same document, that two page document, and you're doing multiple sets, if you select offset, it'll actually stagger or offset those sets a little bit so that they're easier to separate. Okay. Now we're going to go up to our next tab, which is the Layout tab. Okay, under the Layout tab, you'll notice you have an um, option to do a combination. So if you select Combination, you'll notice you can do two in one. You can go all the way up to 16 pages on one. And basically, what that does, that just lays your document out on a single page, multiple pages on a single page, which makes it um, kind of helps you with saving paper um, and filing space and time. Okay. This is a good one, skip blank pages. Um, what this does, if you have a document that you know that has 
um, divider sheets in there or somebody um, you have sent you a document with a Word document that has blank pages, you can say skip blank pages and it will not print those blank pages out. Print type, um, by default your driver is default to two-sided so um, you can actually go in and change it to single-sided or you can create a booklet and you'll notice the preview over here shows you how what the layout of a booklet looks like so what you may want to do um, if that two-sided kind of aggravates you a little bit um, you may want to get with your IT staff and they can actually default your print driver to single-sided okay. Your binding position, I usually leave this on auto. Um, the only time I ever change my binding position is maybe when I'm doing a uh, trifold brochure or something like that. And the binding position is just the way that you read your, your document, whether you're le reading left to right, top to bottom, that type thing. Your next tab is your finishing tab. Okay. Now, if you do have a um, finisher that is equipped with a stapling unit or hole punch or a center fold and staple, this is where you would go to do to do those features. So this specific machine does not have a booklet finisher, or doesn't a hole punch, and you'll notice that those areas are grayed out. So if I want to do a staple, you know, I can just select staple, and you see the little display over here. If I want to do a two position to the left, I can do my drop down and say two position left and that changes that for you. So let's take a look at the cover mode tab. Uh, there's several handy things here. Um, one of them I wanted to talk about is called front and back cover. So what this allows you to do is take um, a thicker paper or special paper, or maybe even colored paper, and put it in a, a specific tray and pull the front and the back from that tray and then the middle of your document or the body of your document coming from a, a different tray. So you'll notice that the front and back cover is grayed out right now. So what you will need to do is go to your basic tab, take the copier, I'm sorry, the print driver off of auto and select the tray that you want the body of your document coming from. So for now we're just going to tray, um, select from tray one. Okay, then we're going to go back to cover mode. So now you can see that I'm able to go in there and, and make my selections. So on the front cover, we can say that we want it printed, and we can tell it where we want it to pull from. And I'm just going to use the bypass as an example. And that's normally where I pull covers. That's normally where I put the covers. And I can do the same thing with my back cover. I can come in and say printed, and I can tell it to pull from the bypass. So that's that's a handy, handy thing to know if you want to um, insert covers into a document. Now your next section over here is called per page setting. So if I click per page setting and select edit list, um, this tab is really helpful if you want to kind of like build a job. So you can actually go in and tell the copier, um, I'm going to touch add, you can um, tell the print driver that page one through four um, maybe I want to print it uh, two-sided. Okay, and then maybe five through ten. I can come down to my change settings and I can tell it to print single-sided. And I can also go to my paper trays and I can tell the copier that I want it pulled out of tray two. So it allows you to pull different papers from different sources and insert them single-sided, double-sided. Um, you can even put slip sheets in. You can touch add and you can put your page number here. And then you can come down to your paper tray and you can tell the copier that you want to pull pink paper from the bypass. So that really helps you build a job. It's really, really handy. Now, you also have a tab over here that says tab paper settings. So you can actually print on and insert tabs into a document now. Okay, we're going to touch OK. Now we're going to go down to, um, there's a little section here called Transparency Interleave. And um, for those of you guys that are still using transparencies, this will allow you to insert a blank piece of paper between each transparency. 
Okay, our next tab is Stamp Composition. So you'll notice um, under your stamp composition, just keep in mind this is anything uh, to do with like basically stamping on something onto your document. So if I would like to uh, put a watermark on my document, I can select watermark. And for today, we're going to go down and use top secret. Okay, if you want to see what that looks like, you can touch edit. And you'll notice it, it runs it straight across, but you know, it also gives you the option of, you know, angling it if you want to. You can come in and uh, choose a different font. You can come into the style and choose bold italic. Um, you can actually do one in color if you want to, or you can do it, do it in black and white. You can change the size if you need to. Okay. You could put a circle or square around it if you want to. Um, and you always want to make sure that you select transparent, and that is a default, so that you can read underneath it. Now, you can put it on um, all your pages or just your first page. And actually, you could repeat it all you know, over your page. If you go down really small, you'll notice if you touch this repeat, it'll repeat it over the whole page. Okay. Now, you also have the option of creating your own watermark uh, by going in and touching Add. And what you would do, you would name it first here, and then it will go into your list. And then the text will actually appear over here. So if you ever want to create your own watermark, you can do that right here under Edit Watermark. I'm sorry, Add Watermark. Okay. You also have the option of doing an overlay. Um, you can actually store an overlay onto um, your copier. You can actually do it from your copier or from the print driver, so you can actually store it in your driver, and then when you need to overlay it onto a document, you just go to your drop down here and say print host image. But that has to be registered, you know, before you can before you can use that. Uh, a good use for that is letterhead. I see a lot of people uh, will store their letterhead on here and then overlay it onto a document when they need it. Copy Protect, um, I don't see that used a lot, but basically it would allow you to go in and, and use some safeguards um, if you wanted to protect the document. Uh, I know you've probably seen checks or um, money that have watermarks in the background, and when you copy them, they, they become apparent. They get real bright, and, and you can tell that somebody has copied your copy. The next tab down here is your date and time. So you can put a date and a time on your document if you need to. You can add page numbering onto a document. You can do headers and footers, and those are uh, things that need to be pre-registered. Now our next tab is the Quality tab. And this is where you're going to print in color or black and white. Now if you'll notice, um, the print driver is defaulted to auto color. And um, what you may want to do is get with your IT staff. We usually default the drivers to grayscale. That way, you have to make that conscious decision to go in there and use color. And I'm sure everybody knows by now that color is more expensive than grayscale. So you kind of want to be uh, kind of careful with your color options. Okay, now. Um, another little added feature on your print driver is called Favorite Settings. And what that allows you to do uh, is basically what it says is to save a favorite setting. So, you know, if you have a newsletter you do every week, um, you may come in and tell it that you want it stapled and that you want it two sided. And maybe you're going to go under quality and tell the copier that you want it in color. So now, now that I've selected the settings that I want to use, I can touch Add, and I can name that those settings. If I could spell. So I've named those settings Newsletter. So I'm going to touch OK to save it. So now the next time that I need to use my newsletter, you know, it's usually set at default settings. Next time I need to apply those newsletter settings, I can do my drop down and say newsletter. So it will remember all those settings that you selected earlier. 
So this should give you a basic idea of what your print driver can do. I didn't go into how to use some of the more advanced features, but I'd be glad to assist you. Uh, you can call me at 888-483-7440 or email me at pmccune at comaxwv.com. Thank you for your time, and I hope this helped you guys today.